All right, hello everyone. My name is Chris Cole, and I'm the lead mobile engineer at 2600hertz.com. Um, I uh, came onto the company a little over a year ago, it was last summer, and um, it's been very awesome to be a part of this organization. I've learned more than I even imagined I would learn, and it's I'm just thank you all for coming and supporting us and giving us this opportunity to do what we do. Um, so what I'd like to talk to you a bit about today is how you can control cellular service using APIs. So um, Sean and Ricky just finished telling you a little bit about what APIs are and um, what APIs are available for our Kazoo platform. Um, now, I mean, these, these Kazoo APIs are really the keys to our castle. I mean, they allow you to create your own UI. They, they allow you to do everything that our application does yourself without using our own tools. And um, we talked about how we created our own UI as, originally as a demo. And um, now we're working on an even better UI because we know that you, know, you really like, our, you, know, you like having this ready to go for you. But I really want to strongly encourage you to think about creating your own tools and I don't want you to get lost in looking at our UI and thinking, wow, there's so many features. We could never recreate a UI like this. There's, we, we couldn't do all this work. There's too much work. And I, I just want to start by saying that I think that all the features could push people away. And there is something to say about less being more. And um, I think there is significant value in the potential of creating something with less features that's easier for someone to interact with, less work for you to implement. You can get off the ground with, your, with the APIs and our developer tools like PHP SDK really rapidly. And in no time, like real, literally a couple weeks, you could have your own interface where you can create a Kazoo account like Ricky showed you on stage here. I think that was maybe a half hour endeavor to create that simple form that creates a Kazoo account. Um, you can I mean, manage users simply. Um, one very complicated thing I can mention is call flows, like the call flow application in our UI. There's a zillion things you can do with it. I mean, there's, you can ring a device, you can ring a user, there's manual presence. You can use Pivot, which is kind of like Twilio, so you can have your own call routing formulas. But 99% of call flows I've looked at goes user, voicemail. So if you're going to recreate the entire UI, there's a good chance that for your user base, that's the only, that's, you know, you don't need a complicated drag and drop advanced call flow interface. You don't need to recreate everything we have just to be on par with us. You might, you know, just zone in on what makes you valuable, maybe create one extra module that, you know, gives you your own value add, makes you unique, draws people to you, and then just capture people with the simplicity. Just my advice for building your own applications. <clears throat> so last year, we launched a beta of 2600 hertz mobile. And um, this is a little bit of before KazooCon last year. We, were, we finished our contracts with Sprint, and um, we were allowed to participate in TechCrunch's startup Disrupt, where we were extremely excited to launch our brand new mobile initiative. And um, shortly after that was KazooCon, and we busted our butts to get everything ready so that people could walk out of the door with 2600 hertz mobile powered phones that we were able to give away to many of you. I'm not sure if anyone here received one. Did anyone come last year and actually receive a mobile phone from us? Awesome. And um, so whenever we did that, we basically had the ability to do activations, and we were excited, and we said, here. We have this awesome you know, ability to control your own cell service and tie it into your platform and do call routing and overlay numbers. And you know, it, was, it, was, it was cool and people were excited about it. And I mean, in, in almost no time, people said, all right, I like this. This is where I want my, my number to be. Let me, let me port my number over to you guys. So then we started dealing with porting. And very quickly, people were connecting from their own Kazoo installations, introducing latency problems. And we had you know, error message we didn't understand. And there was all these different models we were trying to support and understanding provisioning and getting the back end, you know, redundant so it was actually a scalable, you know, reliable platform. And all these things that we've been working on in the last year is basically sums up to why we are still today in beta. <clears throat> so the good news is we're closer than ever to launching a standard product. We have customers using our, ID, our UI on a near daily basis to activate phones. 
we're releasing API documentation, which allows you to harness this power to activate phones from your own interfaces, if you'd like, your own websites, your own platforms. Um, we have a completely revised UI in the works, which will offer more functionality than the basic. You can activate a device, you can validate a device, you can check coverage. But um, what we really wanted to do at first is give you a very simple way, something that wouldn't intimidate you, and say, here, you have the power to activate devices yourself. You can go out, get a phone, activate it, put it on your network. We want to get all of the extra clutter out of the way and say, here, you can do this, it's not hard. One, two, three. Validate the device, check coverage, activate. Very simple. Also, everyone is going to get wholesale pricing. This is different from what we originally planned, but we're going to go wholesale pricing for everyone. Everyone will pay for only what they use plus the base fee, and discounts will require minimums. So with that said, I would like to jump into the API itself and go over in detail what functions are available to you, how they might be used, why they exist, and um, what you can do with them. So these are the um, these are the API that we have available, and you can see that most of the calls are broken down into three particular endpoints. So you can target a particular device. You can um, target our port endpoint to initiate or modify or check the progress of a port, and you can also access the subscription endpoint, which lets you actually make changes to an active subscription. When you activate a device, what that does is creates a subscription by giving it an MDN or a f mobile device number, a phone number, and then once at that point, you can do things like check out the info, look at the usage details, suspend it, restore it, etc. So let's go actually go in in detail. First, most whenever we're starting off, we don't have a subscription yet. We're we're going out, we're acquiring a phone, and we need to get it online. Am, am I am I talking too fast or coming in clear? Is am I doing okay? Okay, thank you. Um, so initially, the first API call you would probably want to use would be the device validate. And so if you go on eBay or Craigslist and you find the phone you'd like to use, ideally if you could get them to give you the ESN before you make the purchase, highly recommended. Because there are very many reasons why that particular phone is not eligible for our, for our um, service here. If that device was reported as stolen, Sprint blocks it from their database and we can't activate it. If it was not a Sprint phone, if it was, if it has different bands than what Sprint supports, we can't activate it. If for some reason Sprint didn't put it in their database of phones that they support, they just forgot to put the number, can't activate it. In one instance, I wasn't able to validate a phone using the hexadecimal version of the ESN, but if you go online and find an online IMEI converter and convert that to decimal, it works. So there are some, there are still some hiccups and there are like some things like that to try. Um, other reasons, if <laughs> one particular client of ours bought a friend from a buddy and that buddy did not pay his bill before giving over the phone, it wasn't reported as stolen, it was just not paid for. So, you know, it's, it's difficult to go back and forth on these things because we don't know exactly the reason why Sprint isn't allowing it and he swears that his buddy gave him the phone and didn't steal it, but, you know, it's, uh, there are numerous reasons why a device cannot be validated. So the first step would be validating it to ensure that it's okay to come over to our service. Um, another reason for validation is that most, a lot of devices you activate with an ESN alone. It's, we'll, we'll get into the terminology late in the next slide, but an ESN is the electronic serial number that identifies a device. But if a device has a removable SIM card, for example, you also need to supply the ID of the SIM card, which is known as an ICC ID. And the validation API will tell you what type of device that is. So if you validate the ESN, it tells you this is a removable LTE device. That triggers in your head, okay, and now I need, to, I need a SIM card for this device and I'm going to need to supply the API with the ICC ID. Um, so the device subscription, Call actually gives you the information of like the current plan, the current features active, when it was activated. It's actually just an alias for subscription info, the, the first subscription endpoint at the top here. And But I thought it might be useful if you do an activation, you know the ESN, you have it in front of you, but you don't know the phone number of the device, you can still access that data by providing the device subscription and ESN. 
And um, by far the most fun API call is the device ESN activate call, because that gives you mobile service. And um, so the things you'd provide to that would be an ESN, an ICC ID if it has a removable SIM card. And be careful there because it's tricky. Some phones have an embedded, uh, they're called embedded LTE, where they, it does have an ICC ID. And if you look at the phone settings, you can look it up and see it. But submitting the ICC ID for a embedded device will actually cause the activation to fail. So that's a caveat there. Um, we also give it a plan. So there's there are so many plans that we have been hard coded by Sprint that have certain features. One plan might be um, no roaming at all. One plan might allow only roaming in Mexico and Canada. Um, some plans even have um, certain options like WiMAX or LTE built into the plan. But um, that would be the reason. Um, you, typically, all of the activations we've been doing on our mobile platform have been going to our default you know, 260 plan one. But we do have a wide variety of plans available for different applications. And deactivate, obviously, will cancel a subscription. And uh, be careful if um, you ever cancel a subscription or deactivate a device, that phone number on that device, unless you happen to swap it over to a different number, is gone. There's no promise that you'll ever be able to retrieve that number again. So if you have a favorite number that you've ported into, into our system and you don't want to lose it, you don't want to cancel that subscription or deactivate it. <clears throat> All right, let's get into my favorite topic, porting. There was a lot of sarcasm there. Uh, so the port endpoint lets you either supply a specific MDN to see the status. Um, after, you, after you submit a port request, um, you will get a response from Sprint letting you know if everything was all good and they accept the port request and it's completed or if you need to maybe modify something you sent them. Oftentimes you forgot to submit the password pin in the payload and they need the password to release the number or you misspelled the authorized party's name that's authorizing the transfer or there's all sorts of reasons. Um, let me jump back to pre-validate. Before you port a number into the system, you want to pre-validate it and that just lets us know that the number can be ported into the system. And one of the returned values in the pre-validate call is going to be a CSA, which is another term we'll go over in a moment, a communication service area. And uh, one thing to note, um, so you have two options when doing a port in. You can either port in, which means you're going to activate a currently inactive device with that number. Or if you want to do a swap in, that means you have a device already activated. You would like to replace that number with the device you're porting in. Now, one unexpected caveat there was if you're doing a swap in, the number that is already on the device has to be from the same CSA as the number you are porting in. Otherwise, and CSAs are, are regional, so there's a, probably one or so, I don't know exactly how many CSAs per zip code or how many zip code share a CSA, but they're, they're you know, different. By providing the CSA, that determines which area code you're, you'll be assigned. And instead of having you look up the CSA and providing that CSA, what we do is ask you for the zip code. We do a call that determines what CSA is available in that zip code, and that's how we, we send in that CSA for the activation, which gets you your number. Um, so we'll move over to the subscription management functions. Again, subscription info allows you to see when the date of activation, what the uh, current plan is, what current features are active. And we'll go over what features are available in a further slide also. Um, usage detail. So this isn't a complete um, detail of the data usage. Um, we get additional text files listing all of the data usage. Um, this particular API provided by Sprint, I believe, is missing LTE data. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to at least get a vague idea of current usage and you can get also all the call data and like when calls were made and how many calls were made in a particular time frame. Um, you can suspend a subscription. You maybe use the usage detail to see that they've used too much data and at that point you want to suspend the subscription until the following month. You can restore the subscription. You can cancel the subscription which again will, you'll lose the number forever most likely. Um, refresh is a, a way of forcing a device reprovision. So what we do to accomplish that is anytime a feature on a cell phone is enabled or disabled, 
it causes um, the network, the carrier, to send like an over-the-air update of the provisioning settings. So um, by toggling or untoggling like the SIP feature, for example, we can force the device to do a provision upset and uh, you know pull down the username, phone number, um, MMS IP address, and, you know all the, all these settings. Um, so there's an endpoint to change the plan. So if you decide this person is paying extra, we'll let them roam to Mexico. You can enable that plan for them very easily just by providing the plan. And we're going to go in detail. I have um, a short demo where I'll use Postman to hit a couple of these APIs, and we'll activate a phone using Postman and see it appear in the UI at the end of this demo, or at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> So we can add features, remove features. Again, we'll see what those are in a moment. Swap device allows you to move a number from one device to another. Interesting caveat there. Generally, if you're using an LTE device with a, with a SIM card, a removable SIM card, you'll probably just want to keep that SIM card and put it into the new device you're getting. One thing I haven't, I don't seem to be able to do, I haven't found a way to do yet is swap that without first canceling the SIM card. Because if you try activating a device with that same SIM card ID that's already active, you get an error saying it's already active. So in order to use the same SIM card but swap devices, you will have to probably, you really can't. You just have to cancel the subscription and activate it. Um, swap device and configure. Configure allows you to update the um, SIP settings, like the realm, username, and password that you are mapping your phone to. And uh, one thing I want to point out that um, you know we previously went over our Kazoo APIs that you know gives you access to all of Kazoo, but th all of the, these cellular APIs are not necessarily Kazoo dependent. Like you don't need to be using Kazoo to take advantage of this mobile offering. There, um, by changing the configuration, you can you could be hosting your own Kazoo, or you could be using your own asterisk system or your own simple free switch system. We, it's all just SIP, and we can route this information to you, so you're not tied to the platform. It's basically an independent product or solution that works hand in hand with Kazoo, and will provide the best experience. Right. Do we have any questions? On Sorry, um, so I think it was about where do I get the MDN? Right, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't go over. So MDN is the mobile directory number, and that is the MDN that is provided by the carrier to you after an activation. So that will be returned in the payload of the activation, and then you'll be able to use that MDN for all the subscription endpoint uses. All right, terminology. I've gone through a couple of these, but it's good for you to see some examples. So again, the ESN is the electronic serial number, and it uniquely identifies a device, and it comes in a variety of formats. It's also sometimes known as an MEID, or can be used in place of an MEID. And uh, so you can see what a decimal ESN looks like and a hexadecimal ESN looks like. And um, after that, we have the IMEI, which is the International Mobile Station Equipment n uh, Number. Does anyone see anything interesting about that number? It's really just the same exact thing as the hexadecimal ESN with one additional number at the end of it. So oftentimes, if it's locating the ESN for a device, oftentimes it's on the box of the phone. There's a sticker that has the ESN. Or outside of that, you may need to remove the battery from the phone and look for a sticker under the battery you'll be able to see the ESN. But um, sometimes the easiest way to get this is to look in the phone settings, the software settings itself. It will state the IMEI. And the ESN is simply the IMEI with the last digit stripped. So, so again, the MDN is the mobile device number. And we, we like to specifically say MDN because it refers to the, the number that is natively attached to the phone. So as of right now, until we build out our SMS solution, for example, it's great. You can have all of these overlay numbers, but you're tied to using the MDN for your text messaging, both in and outbound. You, so we, uh, and we realized that um, people love texting. So that's a big f push for us to create a mobile app that will allow you to use multiple numbers for that. Um, so we have the ICC ID, which again is the integrated circuit card ID. And that's how you uniquely identify a SIM card. 
Again, you will only need that if the device has a removable SIM card. It's an LTE device. Um, the master subsidy lock is a number provided to you during activation, usually. Um, I believe sometimes if the device has been activated before, you may not get it in the response. But um, what that does is allows you to access restricted features in the phone. So oftentimes during the provisioning steps, which we'll see on the next slide, um, you may need to perform a carrier wipe. And um, it is only a, you need the MSL in order to do this. And um, again, CSA is the communication service area. And I actually, it really should say DIN DIN 303, I believe. And it usually gives you the area code of where that CSA is. So th in this case, it's Denver. And I know it's usually three letters repeated like that, DIN DIN, and then three numbers, which is the area code provided at the CSA. Um, again, you, we've hidden the concept of CSA from you for the most part because we simply ask you for a uh, zip code and we calculate what the CSA should be using other APIs. But for porting, you may need to be aware of this. So provisioning. Activation is pretty simple. You pass our, uh, you validate, make sure the device is eligible, check the coverage, you pass in the ESN, a plan, and a device name possibly your SIP credentials if you've already created your mobile device to tie it to. And that's it. Your phone is activated as far as the carrier is concerned. But you can't really do anything with it until the phone itself is aware that it's been activated on the network. So you need to go through provisioning steps. The first one is the carrier wipe, which it's often unnecessary, but I'm putting it first here because if you do have to perform a carrier wipe, I recommend you then go ahead and also perform the system update, profile update, and PRL, PRL update following that. And um, so the carrier wipe will remove carrier specific data, usually only required if the phone was previously activated with a different number. It flushes out all those carrier settings, usernames, MMS, IP addresses, and um, basically lets you start from scratch. Um, it's triggered by usually, again, provisioning steps vary from device to device. iPhones often are able to auto provision, so you don't have to go through any of these steps. Um, and depending on whether you're using a Samsung or you know, whatever it is, there's different menus to get to all these things. But in general, the steps are carrier wipe, system update, profile update, and PRL update. And you can see the reasons for all these here. <clears throat> Another fact I learned recently is that over-the-air updates require a cellular connection. However, newer LTE devices do support updating over Wi-Fi. So if for some reason you're activating and you're in a spotty area and you can't get the phone to provision, connecting to a Wi-Fi signal can increase your chances of getting that done. And uh, just really quickly, so we talked about adding and removing features from a device. These are some of the, like just basic cellular features that you're able to control using the add or remove features API. So if maybe you're planning some sort of solution that doesn't require voice, maybe you're just offering someone, a, you know, you're, you're offering spurts of data usage for, for audio streaming or whatever it might be, you, you would, you know, you would just activate with voice blocking on or you would enable voice blocking or you can, you can create value by restricting access and, you know, in certain situations. Um, SIP is the feature that we use that allows us to route all of the calls through our own platform. Uh, I think uh, most of the others are self-explanatory at what they do. Ooh. Let's have some fun with the APIs. I could have done this the whole time. So I want to give a shout out to Ryu. Ryu's, Ryu's been repping us for almost 20 years. Violent, forceful word of mouth advertising. Kazooka! All right, bear with me one moment while I log back into the proper account. Look. 
And I left that one there. Let me use the API. Let's activate. All right. So we can see currently now in this account, I have no devices active. And in, in case, who has seen this uh, mobile interface before? Okay. Um, it's super simple. It's primitive. Again, we want to keep it simple. And uh, now that our APIs are more fleshed out, we can add on the Foley functionality here so you can do your porting and your adding and removing of features and all that for here from the UI. Um, to activate a device here, you'll see exactly as we stated earlier, you validate the device, which I can do here. I, I'm using Postman here, and I have most of these API calls ready to go. But you can see just a call to coverage and a zip code will 94109. So I get back the zip code, I get latitude and longitude coordinates. You can see the CSA I was referring to, which in this case is SFR, SFR 415. And we see that the NPA is 415, which that lets me know which area code um, the phone number assigned to me will have. Also, not to forget the uh, CDMA, WiMAX, and LTE levels. These are um, ranges from zero to three. Zero meaning you probably shouldn't even try to outstanding signal. So we know that 94109 for our purposes, let's say we have an LTE device that meets our needs. We'll go ahead and activate it there. Right, so I just did a validation on, and let's see, let me, let me zoom in here for you. Again, we're, it's much like the, uh, the crossbar API. We're looking at accounts, an account ID, which happens to be the account ID that I'm in in the um, UI. Device, ESN, validate. It's that simple, no payload necessary. And hooray, I see success true. Uh, that means I should have no problems activating this device valid device, true, and I see that it's an embedded LTE device, which tells me I don't need a SIM card, I don't need the ICC ID, I can activate without it. And again, just to, for example here, I can come to the UI, and what's happening here is the same exact thing that happened that I just showed you, it just hides the details from you, and it's slightly prettier, but not much. Same thing here, I'm just using those values to show different images. This is a three, this is a two, and a two. So for the actual activation, I need a little more of a payload besides the ESN. But you can see, um, I'm not gonna send a, an ICC ID or a SIM parameter because I know I don't need one. I can give it a zip code, I give it a plan. Um, any features I might want to activate with, I can give it a device name. And um, this is optional for activating, but you'll need to configure it at some point and able to have your calls routing through your platform. Um, so I could go ahead and activate without this, but I would then need to go into the UI or use the API to actually give it a Realm username and password to link to. So we'll go ahead and cross fingers and activate this device. All right, success. So we get back the phone number. Our new phone number is 619-794-5681, and that's because I didn't send it the San Francisco zip code. I gave it a San Diego zip code where I live. Oops. Um, I get back the MSL that I can use to do a carrier wipe if necessary, and the ESN just for confirmation. And now I can go ahead and Using that same ESN, I can do subscription info, and sure enough, I see the number, I see the activation date, I see what plan we're using. And I can jump into the UI where there previously were no devices, and I see the device I just created called Kazukon Rules. I can go into the settings, the routing. It has the Realm username and password I provided. So assuming that I previously set up a mobile device for this to tie to, after I provision the phone, I should be good to go. 
Um, so again, as soon as the phone is provisioned, you will have data and SMS because those aren't routed through our systems. But um, and before phone calls will start working, you need to provide the SIP information here. And uh, we do have three options for how you route this. So if you use our Kazoo hosted platform, you just provide your credentials here. Same with dedicated, but you should let us know that it's dedicated so we know to route the calls a little differently. And you still provide the same simple realm username and password info. Or if um, you want to do something different and you're not using Kazoo or you're using FreeSwitch or Asterisk, you can actually just put in the URI credentials here and not even use our, our, our platform for your calls. So just one more example, I could go ahead and change this plan to 260 plan 2. Oops, error. No, oh, I forgot to update the number. So I, I called this on a phone number that is not currently active, which is why I got an error, which makes sense. So let's go ahead and do subscription info again. Get the current number of the device. Change plan, update the number this time. And now the phone is on a different plan. Maybe it has roaming in Mexico now where it had no roaming before. So that's, I just wanted to briefly show you some basics about how you can get a phone up and running either using our UI or using our APIs. I think both ways are relatively simple. And uh, I hope you guys um, enjoy the service and have fun with it.